What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders, now Tyler Perry's sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night only on BET. All right, sisters fans, hope everybody's doing well. We're talking about last night's episode, season three, episode four just a talk and to be honest that's that's pretty much what they did this entire episode don't get me wrong this wasn't like a bad episode per se i'm not saying that trust and believe we have seen worse um it's just that not a lot really happened when you really boil down to ooh, the events of the episode itself hell my my favorite scene was really just the uh, uh, uh kind of like the bromance between Preston and Sean and I I know we uh live in an interesting climate if you will in television and media so when I say bromance I literally mean just two guys chilling not necessarily two guys that I ship together in a relationship no I mean like Corey and Sean from Boy Meets World or um, you know, Sam and Bucky from Captain America, well, yeah, Captain America and the, and the Winter Soldier, but I just tweeted it out before I started recording this video. I actually rewatched the episode because, honestly, I was watching last night, but my mom fell asleep on the couch and was snoring, and my nephew wasn't going to sleep. He was just running around playing with his Power Ranger toys, so I rewatched the episode since the house is empty. He... Got on the bus for summer school. My sister went into town. My folks were at work. So I figured, let me rewatch the episode while it's quiet and I could record. And uh, yeah, not not a lot really happened. But the gist of the episode was Andy. But at the same time, I felt like there was more going on at the gay bar where Calvin and Maurice were. And at Danny's apartment where Preston and um, Zach were. So... I'll give this episode, I know some people will probably disagree with my score, but I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Again, it wasn't bad, but at the same time, not a lot was going on. Oh, also Karen Salon. So before going forward in the video, please take a moment to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. So what I'll do, kind of like with the haves and the have-nots review, which was kind of short this week because not a lot happened. I'll talk about this episode in, I think, like four different parts. One about the wedding venue. One about the gay bar. One about Danny's apartment. And the other about Karen at the salon. So this shouldn't be like 30 minutes long, just to put that in perspective. So... The girls are not happy with this surprise wedding at all. The look is on their faces due to the fact that, you know, this photo shoot was just, as Karen put it, or and Daniel, like, this is some manipulative, controlling shit. And Gary's like, wait, what's going on? No, it's not like that at all. And then Aaron pops up. He's like, hey, man, I'm sorry I'm late. I got here as fast as I could. And Andy's like, yeah, surprise wedding, but baby, um, we don't even have a marriage license. Oh, well, that's where Aaron went. So Aaron rolled up with the license and... Karen was pissed off. So what? So you got the license? Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, well, Aaron, there's no need of being mad at Aaron. I mean, he ain't do a damn thing. I mean, yeah, he got the marriage license, but he's not the one that put this together. So it's like no need to take an out attitude on him. So the girls, you know, and uh, Gary's trying to, you know, clear his name and he's more concerned with uh, Andy saying yes, even though the girls want to take her and just pull her to the side. And truth be told, before she was like physically pulled off the altar, when Gary's like, will you say yes? She was nodding her head yes. She was going to say yes on the spot, but she got snatched away. And, um, you know, Gary, Aaron, and the uh, minister are just like, okay. So... Andy's pissed off. She screams, what's the problem when they get to the back room? And I was thinking to myself, where's Fatima at? But she stepped outside for a smoke, but we'll get to that. So, you know, um, I, I did find that interesting because I feel like this truly demonstrates that even though she's in the opening sequence now, it goes back to what I said before about 
Fatima not really being part of the sisters group just yet. So she recognized that this is a sensitive subject. So Andy needs to be together with her girls. I'm just here, you know, as her girl from work, so to speak. So I, I know some people might have been mad at that, but I think it makes the most sense. But in any case, all of them react differently. And I do like how each girl stayed true to who they were or excuse me, who they are in regards to how they deal with Andy's bullcrap. Sabrina's like, well, it, it was thoughtful. It was sweet. No, yeah, it was thoughtful. Danny just wants her $500 because Karen's like, no, I'm taking off my dress, taking off my shoes. Like, girl, put no, no, I want my money because Karen's like, this is, this is serious. Like, I am being serious about this money. And at first, I'm like, yeah, it's like Danny's true to herself being overly sarcastic in a time of crisis. But then she flips it because of the fact she goes right into the Andy is a grown woman. She's going to make her own decisions. She's going to make her own mistakes. And Karen ain't having any of it. And then Andy's like, well, I'm scared. But you have to admit it's sweet. And you have to. I ain't going to lie. Andy sounded delusional as hell. But I do like how she's like, well, look. On my. F I mean, I ain't going to lie. When she yelled at Karen, if I were Karen, I'm like, you yell at me one time. That's it. I don't care what you say. I'm, I'm changing my clothes. I'm getting the hell out of here because I ain't going to stand here for this. Gary apparently remembered Andy's wish for a small surprise wedding on their first date. On their first date, she mentioned everything from the clothing down to every little detail. So that's why she was like, it was sweet. But then at the same time, Karen brings up, well, you remember the first date, but let me talk about what I remember. Danny is like, no, don't. Like, no, no, no. What? He cr almost crushed you, bruised your ribs, all the times you were crying, his wife and this and that. And I'm sitting up here thinking to myself, if these girls only knew about the Jasmine antics from the parking lot beat down in the garage to less than 24 hours ago, she popped up in Andy's apartment with a gun with the intent to kill her and, and I mean, Andy and Gary. If they only knew, bet money Danny and uh, Sabrina would have been on Karen's team. That's all I'm saying. Remember, it's like Andy just uses selective memory and that's what makes it so annoying. It's like, oh yeah, he remembered all these details and all, but do you remember all of the negative aspects of this, not relationship, but this dynamic between you two? That's the thing. So Andy, I'm just sitting there. I was with Danny, to be honest. Um, it, She going to do what she going to do. But I do feel like, I, I get it, a lot of people have not been Karen fans, mainly due to, you know, how she treated Zach last season, as well as how she's cold towards Fatima. But I don't like that she was called out, I, I think it was, um, I think Danny was saying that Karen's wrong, because she didn't want to stand up there in support of this marriage. I'm going to be honest. And I'm not saying this against Karen, but if I was to marry a woman and somebody that I was close to, like a friend or family member, didn't support the union, I'd be like, well, don't show up then. Like, I don't want anybody to show up to an important day like that who doesn't want to be there. But at the same time, it's like, well, Andy, it's your choice if you want to marry this guy. But on the flip side, Karen should have the choice as to whether or not she's going to attend. Because why would you want somebody up there who's going to be, you know, ugly face with a frown and a scowl standing up there on one of the most important days of your life? And I, and I agree. I would not support it. I mean, excuse me. Um, I wouldn't be there if I didn't support it. I would be a real friend and tell you what it is, but at the same time, make your own decisions. But then the fact that you're blinded by, oh, this is sweet when you just ignore all the negative aspects of everything you and Gary have been through so far. Well, he didn't lie. He didn't lie to me once. Um, yeah, he did lie to you. Uh, remember when he said that he was going to go home to his wife when you were the one to take charge? Like, look, we're not doing anything. We're doing things my way. You're going to go home with your wife until this thing chill, uh, calms down and I can keep my job but then he revealed I didn't go back to my wife I actually went to a hotel and yada 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 so he has lied to Andy before but not about the other things but it's like well what about the country Jasmine didn't lie about that yeah she has selective memory so Danny has had enough and she just leaves so Andy's upset 
I want to do this with my bridesmaids. You're my best friends. I want you here. Nope. So Karen leaves while Danny and Sabrina stay and they decide to help her get her makeup ready and everything. And uh, Karen is walking out, but you know, Gary's wondering if, uh, man, I wonder if I did the wrong thing. And Aaron's like, well, it was kind of risky to do the surprise wedding. Karen comes up, ignores Aaron, just tells Gary, I don't like you, but I will come for you if you hurt her again. She's too good for you. And then she tells Aaron, don't you follow me? And then she leaves. So when she go into her car, you know, she parked right beside Fatima and she's smoking on a vape pen and you know, she offers some to Karen and she declines like, hey, where are you going? Why aren't you in your dress? I'm not going to support this thing. Why? Wow, what's going on? Oh, well, you must not know or anything. But uh, she pretty much says that, you know, hey, I just know that I don't know everything that's going on, but I know that Andy says you're a best friend. It'll mean a lot to you, a lot to her if you stay here for the wedding. But, you know, I don't really fully trust in myself, but I just know Andy needs our just needs to support us some friends right now. So she also tries to apologize again for the Zach thing. And Karen ain't trying to hear it. It's like, Oh wow. Cause you didn't know. And then Fatima was like, look, he tried to talk about his ex plenty of times. He never mentioned your name. And to be honest, anytime he would try to bring up the ex and everything that was going on, I would shut it down. And I'm trying to get over his ass myself, but there's just something about him because Karen's like, he ain't shit. Well, yeah, there's something about him though that I'm really trying to just shake, but I can't shake that feeling off. So she goes back inside after once again saying Andy needs some support. So I do like the fact that um, I'm not saying Karen is warming up to Fatima, but hopefully at this point, there's no need of Fatima to just walk around on eggshells with Karen. It's like, hey, I spoke in my piece. That's about it. I've been friendly. If you want to be cold, you're cold. It is what it is. But from there, um, let me see here. I'll just talk about the wedding stuff. I'll get back to Maurice and Zach and them in just a second. So let me look at the notes here. Yeah, so Gary's inside and we're starting to see shades of Gary being impatient and being angry. I'm thinking to myself, yeah, so much for therapy. But Aaron tries to calm him down and then he reveals like, yeah, I'm thinking about Karen because we're kind of dating. Well, maybe dating is not the right word. Gary's like, wait, what? I, I did like this moment, though, because it shows that even though Gary and Aaron, you know, well, that's the spiritual advisor. There are some things they don't know about each other because Gary tries to say, yeah, she's a piece of work. He's like, no, don't do that. Wait, what do you mean? Wait, you're dating? Well, see, the thing about it is we're taking our time. You know, we're both been through a lot, you know, like me and my wife, him and I mean, her and her ex and whatnot. Oh, OK. So I like the, I like what Aaron said here about the difference between you, Gary, do you you say you don't want to live without her or you can't? live without her because or you can't be alone or what is um gary you don't want to be alone or you can't be alone because there's a difference due to the fact that one is something that's natural and is meaningful while the other one is like well it could lead you down a road to doing a lot of things you shouldn't do just because you don't want to be alone so gary's like yeah i'm sure about this she's the one and i liked it it was a good moment so in the back it's Fatima, Danny, and Sabrina. You know, they're done cheering up Andy. She has her makeup done. She's starting to get a little more upset because Fatima says, no, Karen left. But Danny offers her a smoke, and Fatima's like, no, I'm good. I had a smoke outside. Oh, I knew I liked you. That was a fun little moment. So I feel like this moment is almost as if Karen is Bobby Brown and Fatima is Johnny Gill. She's like the new member of the group because she left. I'm sorry. I, I think that just popped into my head because uh, it was announced that, what is it, Keith Sweat versus Bobby Brown at the next verses. That's going to be kind of interesting. Um, so, once again, Andy's like, where they're like, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I'm ready. Or Should I do this? Andy was having some Sabrina indecisiveness right here. It's like, look, you're the one in the dress. Hell, even Danny's like, well, I don't see you getting out of that dress. So it's like, do you want to do this or not? Like, I mean, not to sound like Gary forcing you to answer, but it's your call. It's like, yeah, your girls minus Karen are going to be up there with you, but you're the one who's going to have to live with the consequences once it's all said and done. So she gets up saying, I want to do this. And then it looks like she's about to have a freaking nervous breakdown. Trust me, I've had a few. Um, She's like, I don't want to do this. And then the episode ends, and I'm like, wait, what? So that was pretty much a majority of the episode. This could have easily been 
um, Andy and Gary clip show of all the bullshit they've been through. Honestly, I wouldn't have minded that. No, seriously, I wouldn't have minded the clip show because of the fact that here's a friendly reminder about everything that you and Gary have been through, but you only decide. Basically, again, she's just having selective memory. Okay, now let me get to the other characters here. All right, so Maurice is at the gay bar talking with the bartender, um, and he says, like, oh, yeah, I had two men fighting over me in the bank, Calvin and Jacoby, but, you know, he's called out for his bull crap. And he's looking for Q, the guy who was over at the apartment and stole Calvin's checkbook. And the bartender's like, bartender's like, yeah, he's known to have sticky fingers and he's a thief. But it's worth it, though. Uh, Calvin comes in, ignoring Maurice. And is like, wait, I thought you were supposed to get over Sabrina. You're not going to find a woman in the gay bar. A friend of his walks in named Peggy. Uh, they aren't dating or anything. They just hook up from time to time. And Maurice calls her Becky. I'm like, Lord have mercy. And it's kind of funny because Peggy is talking with Maurice, talking about how Oh, wow, me and Calvin are down to try almost anything. I mean, hell, we haven't tried it with two guys. Uh, you know, me me and two guys, like, nope, ignore them. Let's go dance. So they go off and dance, and uh, the bartender points out Q. Maurice confronts him about the fact that I'm calling the police, and it's like, no, don't do that. I didn't steal anything. So Maurice punches him out and drags him away. Um, then from there, we go over to zach coming to see danny but you know preston's there alone and when he decides to leave he's like oh well you cook so this this was the start of the bromance here it's just like um there's music playing and it's like what's this bluegrass music i don't like it it reminds me you know cotton fields and uh plantation and slaves and preston kind of chuckles like man they ain't funny I did kind of feel some kind of way because it's like, eh, I mean, Zach, you're the one who made the sarcastic comment. And I mean, you're the one that walked into Danny's apartment while Preston was listening to music alone. So it's like, I, I don't know. It, it's almost as if Preston is in the same boat as Fatima where he's kind of like the punching bag of all these characters. But in any case, um, he's like, oh, wow, your mom taught you how to cook. Oh, your mama must be black. So it's kind of like, so Zach, it's okay for you to make those kind of comments to Preston, but Preston can't even so much as chuckle at the joke that you made about what bluegrass music means to you. Again, it wasn't something that super annoyed me. It was just an observation. But in any case, um, you know, he made some steaks, rolls and whatnot. So uh, he'll sit down and eat, but he says, say some for Danny. Really? Look, you do you really want to hear? No, because he's like, yeah, you don't save food for Danny. You know, we're going to hear about it. So they pretty much sit down and gossip in a way like men do. It's like they don't talk about everything, but, you know, mainly because Zach is like, well, you and Danny probably have pillow talks. So I ain't going to tell you everything that's going on, but pretty much, you know, yeah, me and Danny, we're doing all right. And then, you know, he mentions the fact that, yeah, she talks about Karen and you. So are you two on a break or whatever? And Zach tries to let him know that, hey, everything between me and Karen is done for sure. And um, I'm doing well for myself. I'm making money. I'm going to focus on Zach. And... Then he brings up the stock tip information and Preston's like, well, how much do you know about it? But in your gut, if it feels like a good move, then you should do it. And then later on, we go over to the salon. Remember, Karen left the wedding venue. So she goes in and overhears Pam and her man in the back room having sex on her desk. So they get out of there and Karen's like, no more sex in the salon. But what about you? I was doing what you were doing. Yeah, it's my salon. Enough said. And then Pam kind of goes on a Maurice like rant <laughs> and, uh, you know, Karen kicks her out. So then from there, she calls Zach because, oh, wow, he still blocked my number. Okay, I like this scene because of the fact that it's it made sense that Zach blocked her number and it's addressed. When you go back to the bank, not when Calvin got punched, but the one where Calvin comes in mad because Sabrina left that mean voice message on his phone. And she blocked him, I believe, right in front of him. And then later that same night, she's like, wait. Why hasn't Calvin called me? Because you blocked him. So I do like that. Uh, Karen's like, wow, he still got me blocked, huh? And then she actually calls from the uh, salon phone. And then Preston tells Zach to answer the phone because it's been like the fourth call in a matter of minutes. And he's like, no, 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 it's bill collectors. Zach, it's 9 p.m. They ain't calling. That was just a funny moment. So he answers the phone and it's Karen. It's like, Karen, yeah, what are you doing? I'm having dinner right now. Are you alone? No, I'm not. Well, we need to talk. Well, we can talk over the phone. Come down to the salon. No, 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 no. It's not for that. We just need to talk. Well, tell me what you need to talk about on the phone. Look, I'll, I'll be here for like another hour. I'll wait. 
Well, I'm going to finish my dinner first. Okay, I'll wait. All right. So he gets off the phone. I'm thinking to myself, Zach, that's what your ass should have did the first time. It's like, yeah, she, you know, everything she believed I stole from her and called the cops on me. Hell no, I ain't got nothing to say. And then Preston kind of teases like, I knew you weren't done. Be quiet, Preston. So I'm going to, she called me down to the salon. What for? What are you going down there for? I don't want to go. I'm just going there to talk. But I want to eat this steak first. Oh, yeah, you're going to eat this steak for dinner and then have some caring for dessert. He had the little hand going like a rodeo lasso. I love these two guys, man. All right, so uh, let me uh, wait. Uh, I think that's it. That's the episode. Yeah, but uh, overall, you know, th this was okay. It was all right. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. I thought it was an okay episode that certainly had its moments. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, it is Thursday, 1030 a.m., I don't believe they uploaded the trailer for next week's Sisters episode. I'll give it another 24 hours to see if they do because, of course, I'll do my breakdown as soon as possible. But, um, yeah, that's all I got to say. But make sure you like and subscribe. And as always, always, feel free to donate if you would like on PayPal or Cash App.